the most highly anticipated group of death ever continues as life nurses his wounds against innovation who's spawning in the top left of whirlwind a very rangy zerg map that if you spawn cross positions is really what you want as a macro zerg nice comfy third fourth is easy to take depending on which third you take it's going to be easy to defend which isn't the case on every map as we saw him get ramrodded repeatedly Last game, in Daybreak, Life was having a lot of trouble getting pushed at his middle fourth base, and then hilariously, any time he went north to take a fifth, it was immediately punched out. And Innovation really showed how you play against a super defensive and fester turtling zerg. You're consistently pushing him with split units, but also dropping him, because the, in the infester based army is good when it's all together, like a fist. It's not good at splitting up and allocating and defending because as Zerg it's very hard to know, okay, that's a double drop I see coming. How many Lings and Infestors do I need to send to, oh crap, he's at my fourth, and oh, there's another drop at my, you know what I mean? He's dropping at multiple locations like a good macro player, so the bread and butter of defending that is allocating units. Even if you put up great static defense, perfect location like we saw in that Daybreak third from life, Good Terrans, especially once they get 3-3, can punch out static defense with Marauders. And it's another CC first on the high ground map. This was one of my favorite meta games in all of TVZ and in all of StarCraft II history when Terrans were really mixing this into their play heavily. This was a beautiful defensive macro build from Terrans where you would go CC first and wall in with the racks on the high ground. And this pretty much couldn't be killed unless you were going to go 7 pool because even if you went super aggressive pool, the Terran player could complete their wall in so early that you couldn't break it. And it was an exceptional build and Root Cats actually came up with the counter to this, which Cats never gets enough credit in the scene for his little innovations because he'll do something on stream and then uh, you know it'll leak out and a Korean player will copy it and you don't necessarily always get the attribution for stuff like this, but the counter for that build is Proxy Hatch and the Terran's Natural, and that slows their ability to take the Natural to the extent where it nullifies the advantage that they get from that CC first build, and it's the real only way to punish it, because it's sort of absurd to say like, oh yeah, 7 pool beats it. Like, yeah, like the joke newbie build that auto does to everything else, and like, that's not something that you can do as a response, you know, you do that without scouting, so... I just thought I would mention it. Yeah, Cats made up the true counter to that, which is obviously you would do that offensive hatch, and then if you've played any amount of 2v2 or done any proxy hatch screwing around with your buddies or 4v4 BGH, you know that you'd get a queen out and sp start spreading creep and make it a big pain in the ass. The idea is you spread so much creep that you actually can counter it in a way that the Terran has to either make a Raven or use a multiple scans. And that's the real nightmare, is you screw them around with creeps so much where it nullifies not only the CC first, but it's actually a detriment. It would have been better if they went like Rax Expand and could go into faster Hellions, but all about creep spread when you go Proxy Hatch. And then of course that gives you the ability to do spine crawler pushes and stuff. You could always vary how much you committed. The idea was you were always going to be able to sort of muscle your way and get the queen out, but anything beyond that was sort of up to you as far as do you make a bunch of lings to push with? Are you just trying to do the one queen? Are you bringing drones to spine rush? And you know, cats. He was doing all sort of wild shit. But you had to really bring this out and have that in your repertoire. And at this point, that hadn't been introduced. And you have to remember the game had just come out, so a lot of the counters for the builds that Terran did at this time and styles hadn't been figured out. And Terran would be nerfed a couple times, but really what it came down to, just like any part of TVZ in the history of this game, is the Terran players will do an aggressive option and dominate Zergs for a bit, and then the Zerg players will figure it out. They'll figure out a certain counter, whether it's, oh, the 2 one, one build, okay, the counter to that's mass queen and get it fast plus one carapace okay hellbat pushes okay the counter is that you can either open roach or make banes well terrans will get a ton of wins with that and have such a high win weight and then it gets figured out is 
beautifully crisp Hellion Micro being displayed from Innovation as he saves all of his Hellions. And Innovation went Hellion in pretty much every game and would in his career. Why? Because that's a safe defensive macro thing that if you do, you're going to be able to get ahead in most of your games. You're going to accrue an advantage. You're going to keep tempo and not let the Zerg run wild. The last thing you want if you're Terran is when you do your first big push for there to be creep more than halfway across the map. God forbid it, you're third. Something really bad happened if that occurred. So Innovation knows if he does this, he is going to not only be able to scout all ends and react, as we saw in previous parts of the series on Aqualon Waste, but he will be able to also react in such a way that enables him to take a third and do an extremely quick follow-up push. Even if life all ends, he's still going to have that third finished, and God forbid if life punctures his natural and kills some workers, nothing gets you caught up quicker than 3cc mule and triple pumping workers. So it's a way that allows you or it's a strategy and a build or in a style that allows you to not only play greedy and get a big economic advantage, but also recover from cheese if your opponent does do a build order that supposedly counters you and you do take damage, you can recover in that way. And really good Terrans would recover. And if you did styles like Roach Bane Bus and you killed a bunch of workers, if they had 3cc, good Terrans could come back on you a lot easier than you thought. The players are getting their upgrades as normal, like thankfully life is going into a fast sp spire and a macro hat, so we're going to see some mutiling bane here, thank god. The last thing I wanted to see was another ostentatious turtle fest with infestors pretending like it's still wings. Like he's over there playing MVP in a Wings of Liberty GSL finals again, like oh it's, it's daybreak right, we're playing on Wings of Liberty, I can just go right into infester, no fuck that, go mutiling baneling for the love of god. That's like whenever the MLB playoffs start, which I'm so upset about baseball being canceled, but that's like when the MLB playoffs start and two ace pitchers pitch and it's not a pitcher's duel. It's like a complete disaster. It's like 10 to 5 in the fifth inning. No one wants to see that. As if you're a fan of innovation, you don't want to see that either. As about half the Hellions get surrounded, but innovation micros so well that he actually countered that to a large extent. Even though he lost a lot, he killed a ton of the Lings. Because, make no mistake, Life is really trying to be aggressive here, committing a lot to this, and was going to go for a Bandling bust, and then says, well, he has so many Hellions still, and it's innovation, he's not going to miss macro cycles, this isn't going to work. And you see, intelligently, innovation got that extra bunker out there, but he also burrowed the mine in an intelligent way, that made it where if he was to be pushed up with Ling Bane like that or counterattack, the mine would go off and do tremendous splash. Remember, the mine in this era is much more powerful than it is in the era that we're used to seeing because the mine got patched in like mid early heart of the swarm, it got nerfed down. So to say like the mine's worse, it's way worse. And the mine in this era was so fun to watch. As an eSport, having the mine be ridiculously powerful is a good thing. This made players like Innovation, who played a very mine-heavy style, have huge, exciting, explosive, and rapturing engagements like we saw in the middle of Daybreak in that previous game. This game isn't like overly bloody, it doesn't try to like be edgy. The, the whole map was covered in blood, like you never see that anymore. Because it not only did severe splash damage and explosive damage, to your opponent, but it did such a ridiculous amount of splash that it was always going to generate something exciting, whether it hit friendly or enemy. And again, you see how intelligent life's placing of static is there as it finishes off the medevac. That's like a very defensive, like tight-fisted sort of defense. You don't normally see that. You see a lot of people will try to push creep out there and get spores on the corners, but I digress as we see a ton of Ling Bane moving mid-map innovation, really being aggressive through the middle of the map here, dropping that bottom side. That bottom side very infrequently is going to be creeped out there. Whirlwind is a very huge sprawling map with a lot of ramps, and in general it was hard to get creeped down there consistently. A lot of mines being brewed here as a big trap might be sprung. As life is going to try to desperately defend this. He doesn't see the mines. As holy crap about half the lings die. 
and an evasion continues to push and look he even put mines in his retreat path so when he tried to be flanked with mines he was brilliantly defended and life takes a huge crushing loss to his army there but defense his base innovation picked up and checked that corner there are so many bases on this vast rangy macro map whirlwind that zergs could get cheeky and just take exterior bases on you very easy to hide a base on whirlwind we've seen that in a lot of big gsl finals i remember the game i casted between jdong and sos sos took one of the mains for his third lol So a counterattack is going to be attempted here, and life is going to run in with Lings, but Innovation, because his Innovation has a huge swell of Marine Mine come out and defends easily, and he consistently trades out any time your opponent pushes a certain side of the map. If you're a good intelligent player and you have your army in the right spot, you'll be able to trade something out for that and attack, because if their whole army pushes up, You've got to be able to push back, and Innovation does. Unfortunately for him, he loses half of his mineral line, a bunch of supply depots. And this is the thing about playing on a huge map like Rowind. As Terran, you can get kind of lost in the weeds out on the middle of the map, especially if there's a lot of creep. So Innovation has to say, screw it and push, and Life is making a bunch of banes. He wants to push southbound into this army, clean it up on creep, and then be able to continue to push into Inno's natural. And a few of the mines go off, and innovation, the defining factor of innovation is his macro and how much stuff he makes. This is sort of the counter to Star Toe Life's counterattack heavy style, is always having an army at your natural, which is sort of a tongue-in-cheek statement. Innovation losing a lot more workers at his third. Lings are pushing the mid part of the map, this middle creep between the top middle contingency area by Innovation's natural and Star Tail Life's third. Much of the creep has been pushed out. Innovation retreats with Medivacs and does the typical Terran unload to heal, but unfortunately for him, the Mutas swoop back in, and thankfully Innovation gets his army back together, and this is why I like Tart of the Swarm so much, as we've seen constant action, constant back and forth. There's a couple swarm. This might actually be like a cute little, oh, I'm going to make this for mines because the mine was so good, but look, like this is what I mean. is huge ling swap. Wow, a huge swell of lings just decimated there by the mine, and oh my fucking god, he manor mule them. Getting the fuck out of my game, says Innovation. Innovation, bad mannering, star tail life. Life was known as like a pretty BM guy that would make manor hatches and style on his opponents, and oh my god, he lands another manor mule. If you don't know what a manor mule is, it's like when you flip someone off in the game. It's like very disrespectful. It's like saying you're not worth my time, get the fuck out. And it's shocking whenever you see it. Look at Innovation smirk there. He says, I just embarrassed that guy. He goes out first in the hardest group ever in the GSL, the most anticipated group ever. The biggest group of death in StarCraft II history. Innovation dominates it and then smacks around one of the best players at the time, the best player at his race, like it's nothing, and then disrespects him. And Life is sitting there saying, like, okay, I'm wondering how I'm going to get out of this group. Probably going to have to be parting and or flash. Well, all right. And Innovation walks over. He just looks so cool in that STX soul jacket. This is peak innovation. This is innovation when he was the best compared to all of his opponents. Innovation was very consistent in top tier for years, but it gets to a point where you're the most feared, consistently top tier guy at your race that everyone will stay, the pro gamers watch. The ghost guys are the ones that are staying up to see what you do the very moment it happens. That's when you're sort of the most feared player. Because it's the GSL, there are tons of gods. There are really no bad players. It's a Korean horror show. If you're like a foreigner trying to win the GSL, man, it seems like incredibly daunting, especially in this era. Because you have all the S-Class legends from the Wings of Liberty era, like Live, but then you also have all the Kespa guys coming over who are li living legends. Bisu, Jadong, Flash, who's in this group for God's sake. And it looks like Innovation's dead 10 times over. Life expands southbound, which is intelligent. Let's talk about like, positional imbalance in this map. And because they spawned in a close position, which was better for NO, and even then it seemed very long and far away and wide. 
The Zerg Light can't take this third, because Terran can take this third, and it's very easy to push to these close locations, so Zerg has to expand southbound. And because this map is huge, there are a lot of easily hideable, wheeling out expanding Zerg bases, so you have to be wary of that if you're Terran. This is a map where Zerg can run wild very easily, and you're really hoping that you spawn in close. And God, you really never see innovation drop manor mules on people, so... I sort of wonder if they had beef to some extent. But it is sort of funny, like, to see, like, what happened to life in the future. To see him get manor mule there, because it's like, yeah, eat shit. N not that I'm one of those people that is going to sit there and prattle and just dash life all day and be a total ass to him. But, because he was ridiculous in this era, but it's like, yo, you know what life you deserve to be manor mule, easy.